Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. We're talking about naval controversy today, and before we get into the video, I would love to hear what your favourite warship is. I'll tell you mine, but let me know in the comment section below. Mine is the Type 45 Destroyer, and in close second the Type 26 Frigate, which hopefully one day here in Canada we will get, but I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know what you love in the modern naval fleet of today. Today's video is a little bit controversial, and what I want to make very clear before I get into it is that I do not have all the facts. This is, um, you know, not a news report, so to speak, because I'm just looking at interesting factoids and information on the internet and poising them to you, and you can make your own debate as to what's real or accurate or not, and because the facts are very hard to determine when we're talking about two sides of the story, and I am not a naval researcher, so I'm not going to get into either the politics or the military debacle that is going on with this story, but it is interesting, so I thought I'd share it. So, China is apparently increasing its targeting against Western militaries and political powers conducting missions on behalf of the United Nations uh, with ships in that area. And they are broadening a so-called grey zone of maritime activities beyond those that simply look to protect Beijing's expansive territorial claims. Recently, a quite unique and controversial incident occurred between Australian and Chinese warships in the East China Sea. This incident on November 14th has caused waves, pardon the pun, amongst Western and Chinese military leaders and politicians, and sadly was also one of the first that apparently left Australian personnel injured. The acting Prime Minister, Richard Miles, said the Australian government had expressed, quote, serious concerns to Chinese officials after Her Majesty's Australian ship Toowoomba, which by the way is an incredible name of a ship, and I'm sure that name has some cultural or heritage or history related to it, so I hope I have made no offence to any Australians watching this, but that is an incredible name. But HMS Toowoomba had actually come across a um, People's Liberation Army Navy destroyer. The ship was in international waters in Japan's exclusive economic zone after fishing nets actually became entangled in its propellers. The frigate had been helping to enforce UN sanctions in the region. Because the net had fouled its props, the crew sent a team of divers down to untangle the mess. While the divers were working, the Chinese warship Ningbo, pennant number 139, approached the ship. The Australian long-range frigate had communicated its intentions to the Navy destroyer from China to conduct these Navy operations of diving on normal maritime channels and using internationally recognized signals. They basically said, hey, we have divers in the water, please don't do anything silly as we try and fix our problem. The crew of the Toowoomba attempted to warn off the Chinese vessel coming closer and closer, informing them also not to use their sonar as divers were in the water. But supposedly, and this is supposedly because again I'm not a fact checker, Ningbo continued to approach, and it was quote, detected operating its hull mounted sonar in a manner that posed risk to safety of the Australian divers, according to the Australian Ministry of Defence. Basically saying that the Chinese warship said, you know what, I'm nearby and I'm still going to test the sonar. Now I don't know if that is actually being done, but it's been stated that doing this has actually injured the divers because sonar is so inherently dangerous underwater with the incredible amount of sound that it produces uh, at decibels that can literally almost melt your brain. The Nigbo is actually a modified Chinese version of the Russian Sovremini class destroyer, which is a class of guided missile destroyers originally built by the Soviet Navy. During its history, it's been primarily used by the Russian Navy and expanded with the People's Liberation Army Navy from China. The destroyers were designed during the Cold War era by the Soviet Union to serve as a powerful service combatant capable of countering both air and surface threats. The design, developed in the 1970s, emphasized anti-ship and anti-warfare for aircraft capabilities as well, but primarily they were used in naval operations to take out submarines. They have a displacement around 7,900 tons, making them relatively large surface combatants. These destroyers are armed with an impressive array of weaponry, including anti-ship missiles, surface air missiles, torpedoes, and naval guns. For the sonar, though, it's quite hard to find details of if there's much differences between the Russian and the Chinese Type 956EM destroyer versions of the system. Medium and high frequencies of the MGK-355 Platina integrated sonar system with the NATO reporting name Bullhorn included the MG-335 are installed on a hull-mounted array. The Type 956 originally only carries the hull-mounted array because the ASW gear of this class is primarily for self-defense. For the Type 956 Alpha, an improved MGK-355 MS Platina is carried, which includes a hull-mounted array, VDS, and towed array, 
with a NATO reporting name of Bullnose, Mare Tail, and Steerhide, respectively. It is reported that the Type 956EM is equipped with the successor MGK-355MS and the MGK-355TA, which is an integrated sonar system, which includes both the hull mounted and towed arrays, and the NATO reporting name are Horse Jaw and Horse Tail, respectively. Very difficult to tell which actual sonar was used in this situation, but either way, it's pretty obvious that when sonar is used in close proximity of divers, it's gonna hurt. Um, it's just the way it's designed. I mean, these systems are designed to detect submarines and ships from miles away. I wouldn't want to be in the water. I've seen, you know, footage of divers in, you know, Hawaii and just civilian divers abroad being pinged. It is certainly not good. And um, you can even see the distress from divers as they film that on their GoPros. Not a good time. A source did say, though, that the divers had recovered from the minor injuries they sustained when they were potentially and supposedly hurt by the Chinese personnel turning on those powerful hull-mounted sonar rays that are usually used for hunting the submarines coming to look for them. The government in China has flatly rejected Australian accusations that the warships pinged a team of Royal Australian divers, um, and of course the high-powered sonar has created some tensions between the two nations as to is this a tactic that's now being used to, you know, potentially hurt people without indiscriminately saying yes this is a quote attack, maybe it was an accidental discharge, but at the moment China is saying they did not even do it. China in the past has been rigorous in pushing back against Western militaries that challenge what Beijing deems as its core interests. This year, the activities of its Navy, Coast Guard, and Maritime Militia have included a Chinese warship crossing in front of a US destroyer in the Taiwan Strait, and repeated clashes with Filipino vessels in the disputed Spratly Islands in the South China Sea. It goes to show that while there are some common interests, deep and currently unresolvable differences will continue to punctuate China's relationship with the West. The Navy and the Air Force of China's People's Liberation Army have been increasing their activities in the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea for some time, and there are regular close calls. In late October, flares were fired in front of a Canadian military helicopter and clashes between Filipino and Chinese vessels have been incurring even more so in recent months. In early 2022, the Australian Defence Force accused a Chinese warship of pointing a military-grade laser into an Australian aircraft flying just north of Australia, and unlike that of central London or New York, where helicopters can go chase down the little punks pointing a laser pen or something at the helicopter or an aircraft, it's not quite as simple in this scenario, but just as dangerous nonetheless. Now, as these situations unfold, it is quite imperative, in my opinion, for the parties hopefully to involve and engage in the diplomatic dialogue and try and adhere to those established protocols and work towards finding a resolution that ensures that safety of maritime activities in international or even contested waters. It's very murky, the water, in all honesty, unlike the beautiful clear water that these divers are in right now. Just look at that, God, what a job. Um, but the incident does serve as a reminder, though, of the delicate balance required in navigating geopolitical challenges in the interconnected world, especially when it comes to naval combat, naval warfare, naval interactions, because there's so much gray area there. Um, but in this situation, you know, with divers being hurt by sonar, it's hard to say, you know, the, the technicalities of how it all came to be. There's a lot of accusations. It's hard to fact check. And I'm on no side of the story here. I'm purely just kind of informing you of a situation that happened. But I would love to hear your opinion on this situation. What do you think? Um, I can't imagine being one of those divers in the water if it was being pinged and sonar at that level of extreme. I just, you know, it just, I hate to even think about it. Um, hats off to the divers, though, that were protecting that ship and getting her going again uh, with the nets around those propellers. Of course, very hazardous job as it is. Um, I'm sure it's shark infested waters back there, too. I don't know how they defend against sharks, big harpoon guns like. You know, freaking James Bond or something, but really, really cool that the divers were able to recover, though. I'm really happy about that. Let me know, guys, in the comment section below what you think. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that little like button. Leave me a comment. I'd love to know how you feel about the video. And if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, click the little bell by the subscribe button. And you're going to, of course, you know, click out on my uh, description box below with all the different descriptions and links of things I've got going on, like Facebook. Thank you to everyone who's been donating to me on Patreon and on my PayPal pal i cannot thank you enough and finally feel free to go check out my uh, sponsorship brand that i'm working with which is attire for effect they make really cool clothing flags patches decals stickers etc for artillery themed clothing really really cool go check them out thanks for joining me today have a wonderful one all the best Bye bye